Did you know there's a way to level up the PvP hourglass factions without doing any PvP at all? And I don't mean by loss farming either, no. So I had this idea floating around that if you found yourself not getting invaded while the hourglass is raised, due to either being on a full server or the awful queuing times, if you were to obtain a faction stash grade, could you lower your hourglass and gain allegiance for your chosen faction without participating in any PvP at all? I know, counterintuitive to the whole reason Season 8 even exists, but I needed to know. Faction stash grades are a mechanic attached to the hourglass that reward players who hoard treasure on their ship additional allegiance for their chosen faction. So the way we know it to work is that if you win an hourglass battle while having a minimum of a faction stash grade 1, you'll gain additional allegiance on top of your victory. And on top of that, when you lower your hourglass at an outpost, you'll also gain additional allegiance dependent on your faction stash grade. So in short, more treasure, more allegiance. Lowering your hourglass without having battled a faction ship will result in zero allegiance. But I couldn't help but wonder, what would happen if I lowered my hourglass with a faction stash? Would I gain any allegiance despite not having battled? Well, that was what I needed to discover. But there's a caveat. You can't lower your hourglass for at least 15 minutes after raising it. And for those 15 minutes, you're completely vulnerable to another ship invading. And on my first attempt at trying this, right as I'd finished the fort, well, we're gonna have to try again, aren't we? In today's Tales of Getting Booty. So that wasn't as streamlined as it could have been. The mistake I'd made was raising the hourglass before completing the fort, meaning I'd spent well over the 15 minute cooldown I needed to wait. If I was going to optimize this and find out if my theory was correct, then I'd need to collect the treasure before raising the hourglass, put it all on my ship, and then lower the hourglass without wasting a second over the 15 minute cooldown. And so with my trusty crewmate Chris, along with chat, we did just that. And the moment of truth. Would a faction stash on our ship that had participated in absolutely absolutely zero battles receive allegiance. We do, I got it. we do. You can do it just PVE guys, you can do it. Yeah, we got a little <laughs> tiny liver. I gotta be honest, the amount of allegiance it grants is so pathetically small, it's actually funny. I mean, it granted less than what a loss would give us. But I was right though. The point is, is you don't actually have to fight to get allegiance. You can get allegiance without fighting at all. That was the point I was trying to make. For a mechanic designed for PVPing, I think that's hilarious, but now we needed to find out just how far we could push it. I mean, that was just for a grade 1 faction stash. How much allegiance would we receive for a grade 5 stash? An important thing to note about faction stashes is that you can touch and move the treasure before raising the hourglass, and it will still count toward the faction stash grade, so long as you haven't already had it on your ship when lowering the hourglass. So with that in mind, we can clear a fort out, collect the key, then go to a nearby treasury, clear the treasury, load the loot up ready for collection, and then raise the hourglass. And collecting a whole treasury's worth of loot along with a stone fortresses, well, it only got our faction stashed to grade 2. I mean, we were on the cusp of grade 3, but even with a shipwreck by the outpost we were stopping at, that did cool. Well, a grade 2 faction stash would have to do for now. And the progression was actually worth more than losing in a faction battle this time around, which is something. But I needed to know what a grade 5 faction stash would give us. And to do that, I'd need a whole Fort of Fortune's worth of loot. Now, a Fort of Fortune is no easy task to clear. I mean, it's a full 18 waves of skeletons, and the last three waves are all skeleton lord bosses, so I'd be better off stealing one from another crew. I know, ironically we've come full circle. From trying to progress the hourglass factions through PvE only, to prove that you can avoid PvP and progress, to PvPing to steal a PvE event so we can progress the PvP hourglass through PvE. Yeah, it's dumb. Anyway, stealing these things doesn't always go according to plan. I mean... No! Oh. I can't fucking believe this. And so I enlisted the help of my friends T Smalls, Snow, and Prestige to steal a Fort of Fortune. Yeah, I can finally be in not a Blue Sail Gang video. That'd be great. And after hopping for maybe 20 minutes, my goal was in sight an active Fort of Fortune with a Reaper Brigantine currently progressing through it. The stars had aligned. But as we approached the fort in preparation to strike, we spotted a sloop sitting nearby. And not wanting to deal with any potential tuckers, we figured we'd pay them a visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We just think, right? We Got off the boat just Whoa. in time. <laughs> <laughs> they had a keg, you can stop shooting them. Anyway, the Reaper at the Fort of Fortune now had an emissary grade 4, meaning they were close to finishing. Usually we'd strike right as the crew had finished the world event, but we were feeling a little goofy, you know? Okay, that's enough for me. Yep. Get that back. Yep. Come close. Yep. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over. 
Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Hit the guy on Cannoneer once. He's dead. Oh, nice. Uh, Another one's dead. Yeah. I'm hopping to help. I think the other guy was in the water taxi. He saw. He fell off. Taxi, don't ego. No, he's they, they sunk. They sunk. Okay. <laughs> Guys, done. And with that, we had successfully acquired a near complete fort of fortune, which meant it was time to start stacking loot. But this is Sea of Thieves. There's no way in hell it would be that easy. Uh, there's a sloop. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh yeah. Where are they at? Are you next to us? Oh, no, 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 we'll be fine. And it looked like a rogue sloop wanted to try and steal the loot from us. And as Snow went over to board their vessel while I climbed a tower... There's a guy coming with a robot with a keg right behind us. Oh, serious? Yeah. Should I come back? He's dead. He's, no, okay. he's dead. <laughs> you guys are legends. <laughs> Prestige and I sniped the kegs at the same time. I have a bubble stick. Did I have a... Oh. I was gonna say, it seemed weird that there was only uh, one on the How boat. Coming up, Snow. Except we're just superior gamers. Finally, after sinking two ships, we could test my hourglass theory to its full potential. But the queue times were looking shaky. There was a good chance we would be invaded before the 15 minute cooldown ended. But we'd cross that bridge when we get there. We're grade one already. And so with our hourglass raised and a 15 minute timer set, we scooped up the loot from the sloop we'd just sunk, along with the entire contents of the fort's vault. And well, damn. Okay, f we didn't get five. It looks like we'd be taking the kegs too. Hey. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, this is exciting now, isn't it? Now, all we had to do was wait. And while we did so, we figured we'd leave the kegs off the boat. Just in case, you know. And as I waited by the hourglass while my timer ticked away the seconds... Oh, we're in a battle, apparently. What? I didn't get... Uh, I don't have music. It couldn't be helped. With this PvE-only strategy, there are so many outside factors that are pushing against you that it's near impossible to actually control whether or not you'll be placed into battle. And considering the new changes to matchmaking, unless you can guarantee you're on a full server or are playing on a galleon at full... 4 a.m. Well, there isn't really much point in doing it. Anyway, we had a faction stash to defend. Getting tight. Yep. If you can follow anchor, my order, anchor, anchor, I'm anchor, I'm dead. Oh, deck. Smalls, go. Oh, is that an anchor ball? Hold on. No, it's a ballast. It hit. Let's get through that ballast first before we do anything else. Okay. I make this. Uh, we hit. We hit them. The you can go over if you want. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. You guys sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. One's dead. We'll pop lowers here. Two's dead. Killed one. I'm coming back. Alright, so people do like it when I hit them with the, the flintlock and the sword. I'm dead. You should bucket your boat. He's a sword sniper. Oh, shit. One just came back through the door. Are they sunk? You're done? Yeah. Jeez. And we had successfully defended our faction stash. I know this goes against the PvE only concept of this video, but considering we had already proven it can be done with just PvE, we can offset the allegiance gained from a single victory with our faction stash cash out. And... Wow, a grade 5 faction stash cashed out with a single victory is very underwhelming. I gotta be honest, I don't recommend this at all. I just wanted to prove it could be done, you know? And if you'd like to see a better way to grind Season 8's Hourglass, then have a look at this video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.